Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the Burnett B77. In this video, I'm going to show you the accessories for this machine. Now you've got a nice cover that comes with your machine. This is a soft cover. It fits over your machine. Of course, you'd want to have it turned off, but it fits over your machine like this. And there's a nice place in the top where you can pull your handle through like that. But it's great to keep the dust off your machine, which is a good thing to have. And then there's also side pockets. This folds up nice and small so you can put it in a closet uh, or on a shelf. Nice and compact. Then you also have the knee lifter. Now this plugs in right down here. Purpose of it is to raise and lower your presser foot using your knee so your hands are free. Then we have the quick start guide. Now the quick start guide is pretty self-explanatory. It gives you some pictures on how to thread your machine and get started. <clears throat> In the, on the back here, it tells you how you can get uh, a complete manual by uh, downloading it. And also it has a QR code right here. And I tried it out with my smartphone. Works great for getting into the website and finding lots of additional information. Then, of course, it has the power cord and also the foot control. This is a really neat feature. This foot control works like a regular foot control, so when you push it on with the front of your foot, it makes the machine go. But it also has this where you push on it with your heel, and you've got various different options that you can set in settings to make it uh, like cut your thread or raise or lower your needle, things like that. So there's things that you can program your foot control to make it your machine. Okay, let's talk about some of the accessories over here. The, uh, the feet and the other accessories. This one here is your fancy stitch foot. It has a little channel at the bottom. The purpose of that is to allow those thicker stitches to flow through. For instance, if you had a satin stitch with a lot of thread that you're putting in your fabric, you want that to flow right through as you're sewing. Then we have this little guide, bar guide, and it goes right in, back in like that. And so if you wanted to make parallel lines of stitching, you could do that, depending on how wide, how far apart you want to make them. It makes them nice and parallel. And this could also be done in curves as well as straight lines. Put that back out there. It should be a tight fit. Um, that way it doesn't slide back and forth. Over here we have the presser foot for sewing in zippers. Now, notice it has two grooves back here. That means you can put it on either side of your uh, foot clamp there. Also has room for your, your walking foot to fit in the back there. Okay, and we have, this is for doing blind hems. Now, blind hem on your sewing machine looks like this. And see, you can hardly see it at all in the back. And that would be, um, you know, let's, the stylus out. That would be this stitch right here. That's the stitch that I have sewn the blind hem with. Go back to regular sewing. By the way, this is the stylus. You want to make sure you use the stylus. It's more precise than using your finger and it'll keep the smudges off your screen if you use the stylus. <clears throat> okay, that's blind hem. Oh, <clears throat> another nice thing about the blind hem is you can also use this if you're making pin tucks because then you can run that the fold of your cloth right along there and get a nice even line of stitching. This is also good for doing top stitching like around a pocket or the edge of a collar or a cuff or something like that. You can adjust this right here to make it as wide or narrow as you need to. <clears throat> and this one is a really nice foot for doing overcasting. So if you were to use your regular foot and your zigzag for overcasting, regular foot is going to give you a little bit of a scrunchiness on the edge of your fabric. With this foot, that little stitch finger right there, it zigzags across that. Let's go to clear. There we go. Zigzags across that. So it gives a little bit of slack in your stitch as you're going along and it keeps the edge nice and flat. So, and that's in the regular setting for your zigzag. You don't want to make it narrower or wider. Okay, and then 
we have the buttonhole foot. Now the buttonhole foot is pretty important. It's a very unique. You put your button right in here. I'll show you right like that. Zero that right down like this. And put this on your on your machine. Select buttonholes. And you can sew a buttonhole that's just the right length for your project, for your button. It will actually measure this distance is determined by the size of the button. So you can do lots of different buttonholes with your machine. Get that back out of there. And this one is the button sewing foot. So if you were going to sew on a button, you would put your button underneath the foot, select this button sewing program or your, your zigzag and just make sure your uh, stitch length is as short as it goes. And you can widen or narrow the uh, distance of the zigzag with the knob here to make it so that it just goes cleanly on either side there. So that's the button sewing foot. It's got these grippy toes that hang onto the, the button. <clears throat> and then this is one I especially like. This is the quilting foot. It does free motion quilting. A free motion quilting is basically drawing with your fabric, with your thread on your fabric like this. I did this free motion. You would drop your feed dogs with a little switch that's right here and then attach this to your machine you have to take off the entire ankle to put that on there make sure that this little bar is above your needle bar and each time the needle comes up the foot comes up each time the needle goes down the foot goes down and that's how it um, that's how you can move your fabric along to make beautiful designs like this free motion quilting then we have spool caps. Now spool caps are designed to keep the spool on your spool pin because this is a horizontal spool pin and we want to keep that spool from sliding off the end so you'd use spool caps. <clears throat> the spool caps are different sizes based on different types of spools that you have. Sometimes you have a very narrow spool, sometimes you have a wider spool. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, for this <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the kind of spool cap you would use for if you had a spool that's like just a tube, but it doesn't have end caps on it. Then you'd put this in that the end of the tube, and it keeps your spool from sliding off. Over here we have the screwdriver, and screwdriver is for taking these screws out and also loosening your needle clamp screw. Notice it's nice and short, easy to use that way. <clears throat> you also get a set of needles. Uh, this is the Bernina brand needles, but you can also use Schmetz and Classe. Those are other good brands to use. Here we have a spool net. Now this is for the specialty threads that are kind of silky and they tend to unspool by themselves. You'd put this around the spool of thread and the thread would feed off the uh, through this. Think of like a knitter will often use a uh, net like this around a ball of yarn to help the yarn feed evenly off the ball uh, as they're knitting. Same idea. Then you get three um, bobbins. These are the class 15 type bobbins. It's a very common type of bobbin, easy to come by. And we sell them here at Montevilla, of course. Make sure you use only class 15 bobbins in your machine. So when you go to get New bobbins, make sure they're not shorter or wider or rounded or something like that. They need to be class 15 bobbins. If you can't remember what kind that is, call us up. We'll make sure you get the correct kind of bobbins for your machine if you should need more. Then we have a little oiler here and the book talks about how to use that. By the way, for oiling your machine, um, this is something we can do for you. If you bring your machine in, say once a year, we can oil it all up for you, clean it all out, make sure that it's, everything's in tune and adjusted correctly. So uh, just like you maintain your car, you know, bring your machine in, same thing. Okay, then we have the auxiliary spool pin. Now this would be for two reasons. For one, if you had the kind of spool of thread, the kind of thread that doesn't like to reel off the side here if you want to have the kind that just sits on top here. That may be uh, 
sometimes certain specialty threads are like that. The, the way this goes on is you put this right over the bobbin winding spindle. That's where it sits. And this little felt thing right here sits there so that when you stop sewing, the spool of thread doesn't continue to spin. That's what it acts like a little break. Now, twin needle sewing, you can also do a spool of thread here, a spool of thread here, and put a twin needle in your machine. The twin needle looks like this, and you can get them in various widths. Um, up here it shows you, you can use these different widths. So whatever needle size you have chosen, you would choose that one for the, um, the correct needle width. Okay, let's close that. But twin needle sewing, you can do wonderful things like this. Decorative stitches that just really add pizzazz to your project. And I'll just take that guy right off of there. Then we have a combination brush and seam ripper. Now, seam ripper is good for, of course, taking out your stitches, unpicking your stitches, but it's also good for opening buttonholes. Once you're done with your buttonhole, you use the seam ripper to open it. Then you've got your brush for cleaning here. We have another video on how to clean underneath your needle plate. Okay, and it looks like that's it on our accessories. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area down below. We have lots of other videos here on our Montevilla YouTube channel, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.